Let's bring the uh, sound down. I think it might be a little tad on the loud side. I'm going to bring that uh, down to about half over here and see how that goes. Maybe it's a cold mess. Yeah, maybe. But version 0.2 added the uh, the science back into the game and version 0.2.1 dropped yesterday, which apparently addressed some issues that were still present in that. So we're going to see how it goes. I mean, if we get frame rates better than yo three, then that'll be something. Um, I, I hear re-entry heat might actually be a thing now because that, that seems like kind of a concept that matters. Yeah, I don't know. It, um... It early, like, oh, it's early access. That that was not an early access release. That was not, that is not early access. That was an atrocity is what that was. So let's see what we can do. Let's jump right in. Single player, start a new campaign. Exploration mode, which is adds the science function. And here's the thing. Um, I don't, I don't think they need to add money back in. Honestly, I think KSP won. The, the money stuff was like slightly annoying at first and then quickly became irrelevant. The science part is the thing that like, is interesting so i think that works out just fine um gameplay mode exploration we'll leave the difficulty to normal um science is back is what we're gonna call it well you know what we'll keep it with the kerbal uh, space agency name that's fine maybe i'll try a different flag though I like this one over here i think this seems cool mm -hmm. and yeah they don't want money it's supposed to do resources yeah yeah, I think their plan is not to add in uh, money. What is current cadet orientation? Oh, that's probably like uh, tutorials and dual tips and stuff like that. Early access still requires the game to, you know, work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I think if they'd launch maybe with the features they've got now, that might be more acceptable uh, as an early access. But uh, I think there was just pressure to launch the game. Like they, the game launched in this early access, I think two years after it was supposed to and it was in a goddamn near unplayable state. Something something else went gone there. It just They just had to force it out because they kept, like, I think they kept having to restart and screw everything up. I do like these videos a lot, though. They're very cool. That old-timey vibe. A little bit like the uh, Loki um, season one videos, too. Space program. Leaping forward into the cosmos. KSP1 is so awesome, especially you RP1. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've only messed around with it. Sublime mysteries lie hidden in the darkness, like jewels never beheld. These untold treasures may soon reveal themselves due to the efforts of recently founded Kerbal Space Oh my, I think that might have been the only copy of the orientation film. Hold on, slides, uh, somewhere. Yeah, I tried RP1. I didn't I didn't enjoy myself with it, but I thought it was very good. Like the difference, right? Gathering of astronomers, astronauts, and engineers. After years of That's the real propulsion stuff with the real fuel and like you have to make sure that like there's like pressure pulling the fuel down to the bottom and stuff like that. Yeah. It was a little too hardcore for me. Too fiddly. The best way to advance our technologies further is to get up there and learn by doing. All we need now is somebody to show us how to put all these parts together. Well, we also need somebody to help us. So out. shiny. We need a lot of help, actually. That's why you're here. My name is Paige, by the way. If you need any hints, feel free to visit me over at the training center. Everything in there is well padded, so it's a great place to get up and running. Welcome. RP1 aboard. equals fun removal. Yeah, it's just like the uh, combat extended mod at RimWorld. It's like, do you want to remove all the fun from RimWorld? Combat extended, baby. And of course, some people really love it. But yeah. All right. Go. Thank you. R&D Center. I, I think I think we're probably fine. I probably could have skipped the orientation, uh, but that's going to be OK. Um, I guess if I'm playing on Windows mode, I guess I don't get the uh, the frame rate indicator um, from Steam anymore. Hmm. But I'm kind of curious. Uh, was it under user interface? Does anyone know? I saw it just a little earlier. It's not going to be under gameplay, is it? That would be... It, why would it be under gameplay? What does FPS have anything to do with the gameplay? They're intentionally hiding it. And keep an eye on the FPS over there. Although this is certainly a heck of a lot better than it used to be. All right. So let's go and just take a quick look at the other station before we jump into the uh, the VAB over here. R&D Center. We've got science now. 
Research and Development Center, you can spend the science you earn through missions and experiments to research new parts to build even cooler vehicles. If you're a fan of bigger, better engines, focus on the parts near the top of the tree. So we're going to start with starting rocketry. So we got our Mark 1 Tim Can. We got a swivel engine. Uh, Methylox fuel tanks. Okay, a couple of sizes, right? FLT 100 to 200, stack decouplers, a fin, and a parachute. See, not too shabby at all. If we get to the next level, we got a Reliant engine, which doesn't have the swivel, the bigger tanks. Radial decouplers, nose cones. Oh, how exciting. Okay. Escape doesn't... I guess then I hit one of these. Okay. Sure. Um, let's go to mission control and presumably get some missions. So, mission one, launch a rocket. That sounds good. Welcome to mission control between you and me. Carries a mission a fanatic. Carry will automatically accept all missions which leaves you to decide how, when and how to complete them. If you already got a mission for you, select the mission in the mission log and see the objectives. Okay, so we're not shopping for missions and things like that. They're just going to come. If you want more information about mission, select mission brief. Then you can, if you select track mission, you can use the mission tracker app in flight to see the status of your objective. Track as many missions as you want. Once you're all clear on what to do, head to the VAB, build a rocket, complete the mission. All right, so I think it was middle click. There we go. It says mission track. We've got the VAB button in the bottom here. Let's go and make ourselves a spaceship. Okay, and the FPS indicator, I kind of wish the uh, the Steam FPS indicator was working. I don't suppose I can drag this on. Huh? Really, we're going to get rid of it relatively soon. But we'll leave it there for now. And I guess I am, no matter what I where I put my head, I'm going to be blocking something, unfortunately, here. I'll move here. Nah, whatever. I'll stay there. It's going to be fine. Uh, I'll we'll, we'll figure out a way to keep you guys updated on the, uh, the Delta V. All right, I'm going to read this just to make sure that uh, there's nothing I'm missing. Um, because again, I haven't played KSP since it originally came out. KSP 2 since it originally came out. Well, I haven't really played KSP 1 either. It actually um, isn't the Steam indicator on the top left. This is not the Steam indicator. This is the this is the built-in Kerbal one. The Steam indicator uh, isn't showing up because I'm running the game in windowed mode, so I don't think it does for those games. I do that because annoyingly, even if you put it in borderless full screen, if I click out like I often do when I stream, it minimizes the game. So I'm having to run it in windowed mode um, with a pop-up window option to make sure it stays in the foreground for me. Above it, no, no, there's, there's nothing else there. You can, there's, there's nothing else to see over there. If you guys can see some FTS, then something's weird because I definitely can't. Anyway. All right. Uh, assemble vehicles, parts picker, take a piece, put in workshop, good starting rocket. Yep, mm-hmm, okay, we can favorite. Da, 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 da. Construct several assemblies or section vehicles at the same time. It's actually quite cool because in KSP1, it was actually kind of annoying to uh, develop separate things because you mostly always had to have everything connected. Like you could take something off and leave it aside as a ghost, but you couldn't really interact with it anymore. So we'll do this. <laughs> uh, engineer's report, how your vehicle will perform. Right, that's true. Thrust to weight ratio, we want it to be bigger. And the trip planner, that is really cool because we can use it to get some built-in Delta V stuff. I mean, a lot of these features are really, really wonderful. I think the UI is a little big and clunky when you're in flight. I don't. Th I think that's still a bit of an issue, and I think I'd like a more simplified version there just to clean things up a bit, but, you know. All right, and then lunch. I do like the, the multiple launch locations. That's quite cool. All right, I think we're good to go. So, I mean, our mission here is just to launch our first pod. So, we'll go ahead and... Whoa! You can clip the camera inside. Okay, the zoom levels are a little aggressive. Actually hard to like intentionally duplicate the scene inside the pod again, but sure. I don't think that's a particularly big deal. Click move around, good. Um, so we just we just need to go up a tiny bit and then come back down. So I'm gonna take the smallest fuel. Uh, I'm gonna put in the swivel thing. Well, I mean, that actually might be a little tricky because the acceleration would be insane. I guess, can I still downrate this? I can put a threat thrust limiter. That's good. Um, engineers, that's part manager. Engineers report. So what's our thrust to weight right now? Uh, yeah, 6.49. Um, we could probably bring it down a bunch, but we can probably bring this all home. Like, we can put a decoupler to drop the engine part, which I guess it doesn't matter. If we don't worry about money, we really don't care what comes back home or not. F it! Let's rock it as much as we can for a first launch. Is there a way to um, move my camera just up and down? Shift, control, control with right click. Oh, hold on. Middle mouse click it does what I want. Perfect. You know what? Yeah, we'll just we'll just make this as beefy as we want. So um, we'll do this. 
I mean, I don't know if it'll... Uh, is it... Didn't that used to be shift-click to duplicate? Alt-click? Okay. Yeah, we don't have a heat shield, but we don't... They don't exist. Just... Let's not go into space here. Delta V... Ah, Delta V will get us to space. All right, you know what? Fine. Let's just do this. We'll do this. Let me derate this engine to, like... That's two... Doesn't update instantly. All right, uh, no, we can do a little bit more. Let's do something like that. Thrust weight ratio 1.6. We'll still go up pretty quick, but that's gonna be fine. Uh, check staging, engine, decouple, parachute. What could possibly go wrong? Do we pick our pilot here? I wonder if the launch bouton will give us that. Let's see what happens. I guess it just put Jebediah in there. There's probably somewhere I can do it. All right, so our frame rate has dropped down to 100, which is still fine right now, but we have, you know, definitely lost by being on here. But it's still a heck of a lot better than it used to be. No safety lights, yeah, we're doing. This element's your flight cluster, mm-hmm. Your speed, yep, for this time speed, yep. Uh, staging stack, uh-huh. First stage is at the bottom, gotcha. Uh, we don't need the training center, we're fine. Yeah, see, like, there's, there's some neat details for, like, some amount of realism on here, but it also has a lot of distracting details on this, I find. Um, I wouldn't mind kind of a stripped down version of that, and it probably doesn't have to be quite this big. It wouldn't have to be this big if it didn't have so many little extra details on there. Um, so that's something I might still like to see. Um, we'll see. Presumably, yeah, this is my SAS. I was going to say, I don't... Stability is on. Looks like I can't toggle it off. That's interesting. But neither can I choose a thing. So, I mean, it might be a pilot skill thing. Jebediah might just have basic SAS, but... It's interesting that I can't toggle it. Am I doing something wrong? Is that just the way it is? Might just be the way it is. All right. Well, I guess we're just going to go. I do like the countdown. You can you can you can skip it whenever you want. And you can make it always skip. But that's OK. It's because you landed. No, you definitely want to be able to set your SAS before liftoff, generally speaking. All right, speed is 40 meters per second, 50. We're gonna want a gravity turn just uh, to not go straight up and down. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of that. So my head is hiding the fuel situation. I can probably move to here, I think. It's probably reasonable. So yeah, we'll go like a slight ballistic traje trajectory for if nothing else, we can re-enter into the ocean. And yeah, I don't really want to go to space today. And I definitely don't want to go steeply straight up. And then the problem is then you come steeply straight down, which means there's not going to be enough air between you and the ground. If you're going sideways, there's more air between you and the ground because you're cutting a diagonal line and therefore things are better. All right, that's our fuel. We'll go ahead and stage. And yeah, we don't have a heat shield. The MUN! So let's just verify. Oh, okay, hold on. Now these are available. So Okay. I guess it's just in basic SAS mode, just the basic stability assist mode for launch, but not any of the locks. So we're gonna go retrograde here just to set our butt into the wind, which is fine. Um do we have a color on our parachute to show deployment safety? Speed's currently accelerating. I'm going to go ahead and hit the button. It's in white. It's not in yellow or red, so presumably it's okay. It's not doing the full deploy right now, which is probably fine. It's probably set to do the full deploy at a certain pressure. I just click this. Does it toggle it off? Can I not, can I not run with, like, just no SAS? Can't lock into direction doesn't exist yet. Yeah, but up always existed. Why couldn't I lock to up? on the launch pad. Um, um, parachute, 1500, 1000. Okay, I was gonna say, when is the parachute gonna fully deploy? Jeebus. Yeah, there's SAS over there. Oh, maybe that's the toggle? Oh, all right, that's the totally turn it off toggle. Okay, and that's the mode. Thanks, appreciate it. Still a little weird, like, Almost be like, why can't I just click the mode I'm on to turn it off? But, uh, okay. No, no, that's fine. Full control, right, for radio signal stuff. I like how, uh, 
Wow. We've got, like, would we call this a gimbling issue? On the direction, flipping between east and west constantly? That's weird. EVA for science. I wonder if we can. Tell you what, let's succeed this mission first and then we'll experiment with it. Um, I didn't change any graphic settings. In fact, when I before I started the stream, I just went and clicked like the, the highest graphic option to see what it would do. So FPS issue seems to have been fixed. I mean, we'll see what happens when we've got a more complicated thing, but that's going to be OK. Um, OK, hotkeys for accelerating with the physics is still period and comma, presumably. Pro tip, don't put parachutes to the doors. Yeah, we've been there. And we're going to get a sluice down. So we're getting some blinking over here. Oh, perform experiments. Okay, so hold on. That's probably for the uh, the EVA. Let's try it now. Successfully landed. You're going to vessel. Da 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 da. But if I click this, and I appreciate that we've got blinking lights for the science. That's one less mod than I need later on. So yeah, we can get observation. I could have gotten some earlier on the flight, but that's fine. Uh, I think I just saw a school of kitten fish. Do I? Has this happened? By virtue of me hitting this, or was it automatic? Because I think I can... It looks like I can transmit it. Normally, I'd have to keep it. Sample zero. Data zero or four. Let's see what happens when I click this. No, nope, we seem to be transmitting. Okay. Which is eating to my electrical power. I don't know how many generators. That's fine. Okay, that completed. We sent it. We have no more data left. So samples must be from, like, the material studies and stuff like that. So they're different. So does this is this happening automatically? There you go. Go outside. Can I? Okay, I can't click the go outside from here. But by EVA. I go perform experiments here to earn new research reports. I wonder if I have to let go. What prompted the return to KSB two? There was a the a, a patch yesterday, and there was a science update. Um, a little while ago. If I let go and now hit this. Oh, experiment in progress. There you go. We're gonna find out if Jeb can swim. He's taking a water sample. He wants to take a drink, but he hasn't figured out how to open his helmet. That's fine. So presumably I can just close this and I'm gonna have this. We're gonna test to make sure that's the case. Oh, this was an actual sample we have to return. There's also the data and he can't transmit himself. So I guess that's fine. We'll grab, we'll reboard. All right. And then if we want to recover, I'm going to get rid of the FPS indicator now. I'm satisfied that it's not like horrid anymore. The FPS indicator that for some reason is under the gameplay category, which makes no sense whatsoever. Toggler lights. Sure. Um, views, maps. All right. We still got our parts manager, mission tracker. I wonder, um, did we fall short of 10K? Would it have automatically completed two of these at the same time? Probably it would have. We could probably save some time. Okay, there's all the science I've got. Okay. How do I actually recover this vessel? I know there was, I guess right here on the escape screen, which is, I guess that's fine. I got the 9K. So we could have completed two missions in a go if, uh, if I'd gone ahead and just added more fuel. But I was like, oh, we'll be conservative in the first launch. All right, you've got enough uh, science to develop new technology. When you're ready, head over our knee center and earn some new parts. I wonder if we can orbital this time. I don't know if we got the heat shield. This is quite awkward, but okay. Um, oh, I got to go to the science place first. R&D. I'll get used to the escape thing. Uh, light launchers. Yeah, no. Um, I got 18 more science. Aerodynamics and stability? Nope, still no heat shield in there. Construction. We got tubes and stuff by couplers. Ah, probes are fun. Solar panels. Okay. Antennas, batteries. Uh, we could get a science junior to get more science. That's probably the way to go. Is just unlock that so we can get a little more science a little bit faster. I wonder, survivability for heat shields? Survivability for heat shields. All right. Yeah, let's get environmental science. I wonder if we can do the, um, there's no, is there a runway? There is. Now, when I launched here, it didn't actually give me the option of, oh, there we go. 
There we are. I wonder if we can do our little science roller like we have done in the past. We might be able to get away with a heat without a heat shield from low orbit. Uh, in KSP-1, you certainly could. We could risk it here and see what happens. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, there's no plans for money in KSP-2, which is fine by me. Let's let's try to do our science roller and see what happens. Can I change? There you go. Workspace orientation. So now. Oh, it didn't. Didn't do what I expected. So. Yeah, we're sort of lying down mode. I was kind of hoping we'd just set this sideways for it. I mean, we can presumably just rotate it still, but. Hmm. I guess I can build the whole thing vertically and then flip it over. Hang on. If I were to start from fresh. Hey, okay. we look like we're in airplane mode. That's a little annoying. But I'm going to see if we can do our classic little science roller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little longer for stability. And then... Science category. Throw that on. We don't have any other cockpit. No. So my default, like... Yeah, I don't know. Um, tell, there's got to be a hotkey for rotation. It's not R. There's got to be a hotkey for rotation. All right, let's see what happens if we fire this off at the runway. All the hotkeys are different. I'll have to go and check in the options, see what they are. So we can get... There we go. Observations over here. Great. Um, Thank you, parts manager. And then... Oh, an obstacle. Hold on. Roll over. Oh, yeah, it's the same thing where we can't... If I let go, I might not be able to get back in. Oh, there we are. Let's get a sample of the capsule. Maybe if you pre-change the, the launch to a runway, maybe it changes the orientation. That's an interesting suggestion. I like that. And then... They see me roll, and... Oh, we can't... Uh, I can't do the twist as abusively. I mean, maybe if I'd done it shorter... Because in KSP-1, you would do this and just roll off the runway and get a new biome. Still, we got a little bit of extra science. Great stuff. Let's recover the Wessel. Confirm. Cool. All right. Okay, let's try to see... Without a heat shield, you know, we'll risk it. We'll do not even low orbit. We're just gonna We're just going to graze space, go on a ballistic return, and come back. Out of curiosity, if I do go and select the runway... Nope, and that didn't change anything. All right. Oh, it reverted back to launch pad. Yeah. It changes to launch pad when I put it down. The the game is like, no, 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 no. This is for go up rocket, not go sideways. Silly game, let me do what I want. Do, 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 do. All right, fine, be that way. All right, 3,300 Delta V, which is enough to get to orbit, actually. Um, that's the wrong button. Parts manager. No. Engineer's report. That's what I'm looking for. Thrust weight is a two. That's fine. Let's throw on some aerodynamics. Uh, oh, it is still X for um, for the mirror modes, which is great. We can... Uh, these are all dynamic, right? I like it. Um, 
I want to. I want to click on the wing. Okay. I guess you can't do it while you're in the uh, dynamic editing mode. Just wanted to move it up a little bit more. That looks very swooshy. I like it. Uh, let's throw a parachute on the top. Bloom. Oh, um, and a science module, which we will return to Kerbin with. So, we don't have sh heat shields unlocked. Well, actually, I might have gotten enough science to do that. Um, escape. Is it going to save my... Let's find out. Let's find out if it does like an auto save here if I just swap to the R&D center. So if we do aerodynamics over here and then survivability. Oh yeah, I got tons of science. Um, SRBs, introductory construct. I don't think we need this for anything right now. Although I do like the launch clamps. None of these we currently need, although we could head this way towards lights and utilities. We can't get there. Tell you what, I'll do introductory construction just because I like the clamps. So now if I do that and I head back to the VAB, does it still have my ship? It does! Okay, that's quite nice. Good, 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 good. So, right, did I get the decoupler? I don't think so. Oh, no, I did. Okay, good. Um, I did unlock the heat shield, right? Not gonna be in fuel, it's not gonna be there. Did I, did, I, did I not unlock the heat shield? Oh, there, thermal. Eh, all right, I guess it's, sure. That's a perfectly chromiant graphic. Okay, so now our Delta V is only 2600, which isn't enough to get to orbit, but it's still enough to get into space. Um, We want to change the staging though, my friends. Okay, if I click and drag this, I move it off to the side, it does give me a plus. Oh, the plus just hovers there and then, okay. Sure. I, what I liked in KSP1, you could grab something and sort of wedge it in between the two stages and it would create a new stage. But I guess this is fine too. I think we got everything we need. I don't, we haven't unlocked the safety light. Um, I don't think we need, I don't think we need the stabilizer here for this, like the, um, the reaction wheels. We got ridiculous fins for the launch. Oh, wait, I unlocked the clamps. In the clamps. Coupler under the heat shield? No, we have a decoupler. It's this one right here. Yeah. Right? Or do you mean between the heat shield and a capsule? I don't think that's going to be necessary. Right? What? Well, whatever. We're going to find out. Heat shield right side. Yeah, so we got capsule, heat shield, decoupler. What are people bringing up? Are you guys just confusing me? Um, how do we... So from here, I'm assuming this is a quick launch. I'm assuming if we were to save this... And then if I were to... I can't go to the launch bay from here. I can click the launch button there. I can go here and then click our launch pad. I get to choose my pilot. It's fine. Jeb's going to go. Sure. That's okay. Oh, the SAS started off this time. Oh, okay. Stability. Okay. I still can't choose a direction until we launch, apparently. So I'd love to say, listen, try to point up. Pro tip, up is good. Up is how you do space. But I guess that's gonna have to be okay. No blinking lights in the science. What happens if I click on this right now? Because it shows me the possible experiments, all right? I kind of wish you could click on this again to close this, because now I have to go over here, right? You gotta click here to open it. Um, Or not. Uh, oh, we need to... No, no, no. There we go. Or in fact, maybe even start the engine before you decouple. I think for this, it's going to be fine to do it as one. Hmm. All right. Throttle to full. Is it still Z and X? Yeah, okay, good. Lunch. We've cleared the tower. Hey, there was no countdown. All right, 
100 meters per second. We'll still use that as sort of our general guidepost for when to start a gravity turn. This should be a relatively stable rocket, although I don't know about the aerodynamics in uh, KSP-2 right now. I'm going to try to avoid going too far out of our prograde marker. While I tippity tap you over to the side. Yeah, just staying sort of on the right edge of the prograde marker over here. If you go too much, it's big, you know, that you're going to hit max Q, like the wind angle. Now that the atmosphere is thinning out, it should be better and better. We're at 50% fuel. Um, okay. Um, thank you. Go away. There we are. Reward done. So we're still going to... Um, I got an apoapsis marker here. Yeah, okay, 40,000. Atmosphere is still at 70k, one assumes. Okay, I'm going way too, uh, too vertical. I need it to be more aggressive on the gravity turn, but that's fine. We are going to space. I'm going to stop and just lock you to prograde. We're going to be coming down a little more sharply than I would like. Although what we can do is we can wait until we're um, in space and add our apoapsis and we can do sort of a semi-circularization burn, not to circularize because I'm not sure we're going to be able to return from it. But, um, so that we can flatten our orbit a little bit, right? Ooh. Okay, camera lets you clip into the ground, which may or may not be a good idea actually. I don't know, just a little weird. So I guess that's where it's predicting our crash return. All right, thank you. Okay, 60 kilometers. We've got 10 more kilometers and we will have officially entered space. Four to go, three to go, two to go. One more kilometer. Space! Uh, how much time to our apoapsis here? In 30 seconds. Okay, I'm not going to do an EVA quite yet. But yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a horizontal burn. Well, I'm, I'll just do a prograde burn. Um, but at the... They brown the apoapsis to bring up the periapsis a little just to stretch our orbit out or our, our ballistic path so we don't come down quite as sharply. Apoapsis in 12 seconds, 10 seconds. Let's go ahead and start for burn. The time to apoapsis is actually freezing and going down slightly, which is good. It means we didn't start our burn uh, too early. And yeah, I don't, we don't have enough fuel for circularization and that's fine. That was not my intention. I'm just looking to flatten this out just like that. There we go. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Let's go ahead and do a quick EVA. It's on crash trajectory. That, that's fine. Totally intentional. Um, I just realized I won't know the hotkeys for the RCS flight. Let's save actually letting go for when we're in orbit and we have time to spare. I'm going to reboard over here. So apparently no more science. Um, I often like to go into a normal or anti-normal orientation um, to drop the, uh, sorry, radial actually is what I meant, um, to drop the uh, the tanks here. I guess this is sideways is fine too. F5, oh, quick save. Ah, uh, no, let's not worry about it. All right, we are successfully detached. And now what we're gonna wanna do for the re-entry is we're gonna wanna keep ourselves retrograde. Um, and specifically, there you go. I wanna be in surface retrograde because what our goal is keeping our butt in the wind on re-entry. I like how, like, um, seems wrong. Just realized as well, I think we got some of the science from not space, but that's okay. Can you switch to inside your capsule view? CP4 doesn't seem to happen. Not yet? No IVA? Okay. And see, stuff like that is fine. That's just like, you know, just sugar kind of thing on top of the game. Um, at least it's playable now. 
That's the important thing. It's not even about the science, although the science is good because I like I like the goal, right? A pure sandboxy thing. I'm like, eh, I like unlocking things. I like reasons to go places. So I like that. So the parachute is pure white right now. I'm wondering if we're gonna see it change with the reheat effect. Also, okay, the blader is still at 100%. It's not actually being ablated or it's so small that it's not showing up here. So as the air thickens up, we are gonna get slowed down. I'm still not seeing any color coding on the parachute. Shoot safety, safe. Really? Really? And yeah, we we barely bladed anything. On a uh, suborbital ballistic flight like this, um, in KSP-1, you definitely need, didn't need the heat shield. Whether or not you needed it here, I don't know. So it'll be interesting to use sort of the auto deploy options later. I guess, does this just show me the deploy settings? Do I dare click it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, pressure, deploy, uh, altitude, we saw that. Um, um, what happened to my parachute? What happened to my parachute? Why did it go away? I don't think I clicked the cut button. I... Huh. Let's do... Hang on. Let's do... Um, Let's do a little test here. Let me... Um, I mean, we can save this. I don't know if... Jeb is dead, but let me, I'm going to just launch and then stop at like two kilometers or something like that. Why would it auto cut the parachute? That doesn't make any sense. Did it go too fast at some point? But again, it like the screen literally said safe on the deployment and we we're already low enough that at least again in KSP one, it would have been okay. SAS go on. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the staging is still a little bit uh, bonkers here, but... Okay. If I do this... We'll just put a little bit of altitude and we'll kill the uh, the engine. And I can expose, expose the deploy settings. I think that's all I did. Check the VOD. You didn't click anything. It just hid the parachute panel for some reason. Okay, go, 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 go. That's good enough. Stop that. Try to... There you go. Tuck away from this. Now, we're not going anywhere near as fast. Did it, did it rip off when we hit one kilometer? Did it try to deploy at one kilometer and then rip off because we're somehow too fast, too heavy? Oh, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna check that clip because I can't rewind in real time here. Hang on, the audio might get a little confusing. So Mute. So what attitude am I at? Altitude, we're at, okay, 4K at the start of the, the clip. 3K. I'm betting it tries to deploy at 2K. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It does change. Okay, in the clip that was linked, at five seconds, when we're about three and a half K, everything seems fine. But then, just a couple of seconds later, when is it? Okay, 1.8 K, it's fine. Oh. Oh no, it just changes thread. I was like, oh, change the thread at some point, but that's when the chute breaks. We're at 1,789 meters altitude. 
at 12 seconds in the clip, and just like a fraction of a second later, the parachute just disappears. Why? My mouse doesn't... Yeah, no, definitely, my mouse isn't anywhere near the cut button. It just suddenly disappears. We don't have drag shoots unlocked. Should we try the exact same flight and see if this happens a second time? Can I not? I can't... It's a little annoying that I can't just go to the launch thing immediately from here. I guess I can do this. I didn't actually hit the quick save. I was like, oh no, we're going to YOLO this, but that was a little bit silly. But this time I will. Oh, that's nice. I click on this, the hide stock button is still checked, but it's still showing all the stock ones until I unclick it and re-click it. I mean... That's basic. This has been an early access for a year now. Come on. You know me and like UI things. I guess I should have edited this first to fix this. But okay. SAS on. It's a bug, Matt. Lone mentioned it on one of his KSP2 videos. Best just autosave before deploying a parachute. So after a year of early access and a big giant science patch coming out like maybe a month or so ago, and specifically a patch coming out yesterday to fix some outstanding bugs, you're telling me that parachutes can suddenly disappear? Is it going to be another year before I play KSP2 again? going more horizontal faster here. I have to wap wap since it's climbing much faster than I would normally want. Flatten out our orbit early here. Feel this because we're already going to space. You can lock the prograde, please. <laughs> Keep playing. I like making clips. Get that quill since Blood Bowl 3 releases a mess after two bug written betas and months of delays refused to play it. Blood Bowl is great. Um, I played I played in two Blood Bowl tournaments on YouTube ages ago uh, for Blood Bowl 1 and Blood Bowl 2. Um, I that included um, who organized it? Crendor, I think, organized it. Um, Total Biscuit was in it. Um, oh God. Uh, 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 Matt. Um, Matthias? No. Um, oh my god. Why has my memory gotten so bad? Don't get old. Yeah, Crendor still does this. Mathis, thank you. I'm like, I'm putting an extra letter in there. God damn it. I can't remember if Northern Line or Roomba were in it. Because that was right at the time I was doing a lot of things with those guys. All right, a return path is not so steep that I'm worried. This time we will quick save first. And someone said quick save right before you deploy the parachute. That actually seems like a decent idea. All right, we are into space. I'm going to do the experiments. I will once again EVA and then go back in just to try to replicate what we're doing. Oh, I found it. Oh, I didn't realize you could go below speed on the time warp. All right, we'll do that. We'll reboard. Okay, I'm going to quick save now. Oh, if you keep slowing down the speed, it actually pauses? Oh, okay. Kind of like the idea of going to slow motion, though. We'll do that. We'll set ourselves retrograde to surface mode. 
I guess I'm doing more time warping now, which I didn't do last time. Okay, we are now inside the atmosphere. Here, I'm gonna expose this. We definitely, I mean, I hit the space bar to deploy it. And then other than that, I was just sort of looking and I mean, my mouse was moving around, but when it actually happened, I was nowhere near the cut button. Knorr, yeah, yep, 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 yep. I did good. I think I... I got at least to the... I got at least to the quarterfinals. I think I might have gotten to the semifinals, but not the finals. At least the first tournament. The second tournament didn't do quite as well. Okay, we got some more science potentially here. Well, that's the thing. I don't even know, like... You're right, because if there's a cut parachute button, maybe it should have a confirmation, but I wasn't... You can see in the clip, I wasn't near the button. I don't know at what altitude I did the initial deployment last time. It would be nice to copy that. But normally, see, normally I would expect at this point our parachute to be showing red. In KSP-1, this is still too fast. We haven't burned off enough speed. But, you know, it says safe. I think it deployed when it said safe the entire time. It's not going to auto-deploy because I haven't done anything. I'm going to go ahead and initiate the deployment now. And then it's saying just to shoot safety none. Same as last time. Okay. Did it cut when you passed the cloud? So maybe there's a pressure calculation. Sometimes bugs out and rips them off. I don't know. But yeah, it was right around 1700 altitude last time. This speed is basically what I would expect with a non fully deployed shoot at this thickness of altitude based on KSP1 experience. Oh, we lost the parachute again. Why? It turns it turns red when the parachute goes away. Um, is it F8 to reload the quick save? F9? Oh, might be, I think it's a click and hold to reload it. Yeah, maybe maybe this is making it too heavy, and it might so it might just be a legitimate speed issue in this case. I mean, I can't wait anymore because the problem is we're still going to be going too fast. But maybe I can wait until again if I look now, safe. But okay. We're going to bleed off. This is close to about as much speed as we're going to bleed off just aerodynamically here. Everything still says safe. We deploy. And then it rips off. Look at that. It's not the deploy because it's not doing the full deploy. after the cloud there now so i mean this might be a legitimate the, like the fact that it's happening every time is making me think that presumably something is working as designed but certainly not as it's being communicated to us and this i would definitely expect to be a perfectly safe thing in ksp1 of course it's ksp2 parts have different um strength maybe different weights we'll see what happens if we deploy lower that might be a little late but yeah what happens if we deploy after the clouds I wonder if there's any chance it's being something's going weird because of the SAS as well. And it tells me it's safe. I don't get an error message that says shoot was destroyed by excessive speeds. Oh, shoot safety risky, unsafe. Ah. So. It looks like I can't dump the heat shield. I 
I mean, that's, that's, this is, this is nothing. Well, this can be changed. Although I'm assuming if I do a full deploy too early, this is probably going to cause us issues. This minimum pressure, this is if, um, I believe if we hit like the deploy early, where what you're doing is you're arming the deploy. This will change, I think, presumably the full parachute deployment. We might need drogues, although we don't have them. Oh. Now see, that don't make no sense. But I guess it's a little bit thinner. So even the, f the fully deployed chute isn't getting ripped by as many G-forces. So I guess it's kind of legit. Now it's gonna take a thousand million years to land. Hey, cool. Well, the deploy hey, altitude is the full deploy. Correct. That's exactly what this is. That's what I was saying. The deploy altitude is the full deploy. I changed this number with the idea that it'll full deploy higher up. And um, even though our, our surface velocity to be the same, the air is a little bit thinner. So there's going to be less air pressure on the chute. But based on all the screen feedback that was going on, and certainly based on previous behavior, I would not have expected this kind of issue. But maybe that's just a difference in the game and we're going to adapt to it. All right. I'm not going to call it a bug anymore. Just maybe questionable design and certainly a big lack of feedback. But when I didn't, so the pr the last run right before this, I didn't open the shoot at all. And I did watch it change from safe to risky to danger or whatever it was saying. That's weird. So I guess for safety, we'll just make sure to like set our parachutes to do a full deploy at 3k from now on, just to avoid issues. Should never get from safe to unsafe. Well, if the partial deployment of the parachute were adding more drag, which it should, the partial deployment should add drag, and I'm not sure that it does. I don't think that our um, surface speed was changing from the partial chute deployment. And I think that's part of the issue because I'm, I'm sure in KSP one and just logically, right? We are releasing this giant piece of canvas behind us that should add drag, slow us down a little bit more and keep us within a safe range for the full deployment. So something's still a little bit odd there. And I think it's not just me. I think it's not just me. All right. Well, in any case, um, Did it? I'm confused. Didn't it change automatically from launch a rocket to get the 10K before? Didn't we see a get the 10K thing? And so I'd assumed, oh, it auto advances our missions. I guess it doesn't auto advance our missions. Because if it had, we would have completed out of the atmosphere automatically. Because we clearly just did that. One mission equals launch plus 10K. But launch a rocket... Oh, sorry, I didn't realize the 10K was part of the launch of the rocket job. I hadn't actually clicked on this before, so I assumed launching was enough. This is launch a rocket and get the 10K. All right, no, that makes sense. That's fair. Okay. It was like, it wasn't explicitly, explicitly clear, but, but that's a perfectly fine thing. And it's like, okay, well, now I know that. It's all groovy. I don't like this parachute behavior, though. That feels bad. All right, let's work our way up to the orbital rocketry over here. That'll get us our carrier engine. Perfect. We still have 100 science left. We have so much science. I don't know if we need RCS. I don't... We, you know what? I was going to say, we don't necessarily need struts. Of course we need struts. What am I talking about? What a crazy thing to even suggest. Can we get to the safety lights? Yeah, baby. We need some lights going on. We've got 44 science left over. I don't know that we need these specialized decouplers and things like that, but... Um, oh, what small payloads? Cargo bays... None of this is more science. Power management, large solar panels. I think, yeah, Probe's got a small solar panels. I'll get the power management thing. That'll be probably fairly useful fairly quick. Um, no, no, don't revert. Just send me to the VAB. 
So we don't have um we don't have fuel lines. So we can't make like we can't do asparagus staging or anything like that. But we've got some extra stuff, and certainly we can do a multi-stage launch. Now that we've got a space engine, we can do that fairly efficiently. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this part off. I'm gonna go to my engines. We're gonna throw a terrier on that. Then we're gonna go and put a decoupler into that. Then we're gonna go ahead and do this. Um, then we're going to fix the staging. Wait, oops. Okay, it's like something's going weird here. These engines were upside down. The wrong ones were staging at the wrong time. The thrust to weight only being 0.6 doesn't feel right. Is it calculating based on the wrong engine? Um, how come I can't yunk this engine off? There we go weird yeah see oh it's not it's not click and drag it's click move click again okay different from ksp1 there we go okay i was gonna say our thrust to weight the ratio should definitely be above one we didn't really add much weight to this rocket and it was definitely fine before um can we throw that in there I think this is this should be enough delta V to get us to orbit. We could throw a little bit more in here for safety. But I mean, this is Kerbal. When do we ever do safety? Um, I'm thinking we might add some drogue shoots just to make sure. Yeah, I don't think we need another proper parachute, but let's throw in a, a pair of drogues over there. Uh, we'll put them on a separate stage. Well, and, okay, in theory, in theory, let's attempt to trust the auto-deploy system. What I'm going to do is have all the parachutes in one hotkey. The idea being we're going to trigger it. In fact, we might trigger these when we're in space and then trust that this will somehow work out. If we look at the drogue situation over here, right? So they will fully deploy at 2.5k and then the basic shoot will fully deploy at 1k. In theory, I can I can hit this when we're still in space. At some point when they're not at a smear, they'll do the pre-deploy where they come out. And at 2.5k, the drogues will fully expand, slow us down a little bit more with the idea that when we hit 1k, the other parachute will be fine. I still think the other parachute should have been 100% fine in the last flight. Whatever. Um, I think I will add a little bit more fuel, and I think I'm going to add it to the base stage over here. We'll do um a tiny bit more. 1.3 thrust to weight is going to go up. I mean, we're going to get a little bit more gravity drag here, but overall we should be okay. Uh, we didn't unlock more science, did we? No. So, technically this mission is just get to space. It's not even orbit. But what I'm hoping to do is orbit so that we can experiment with the EVA RCS. And maybe lose a Kerbal. It wouldn't be the first time. Still a little confused by, like, the... See, yeah, I was going to say... The workspace. I changed the vehicle name. But I guess the workspace is... The save file? And the vehicle name is just cosmetics? Can we have multiple different vehicles in the same workspace? I'm assuming this is just the cosmetic. This is the save. Yeah, workspace file name. The vehicle name. Okay, never mind. All right. Um, but it would be nice to save little partials. In theory, this will go up and get us to orbit. Probably, maybe, I don't know. What could possibly... Oh, hold on, the lights. Dome light, bulb light, spotlight. Right here. Uh, symmetry mode. We have um we have options for this. These aren't rotating lights, but we can have them blink. Yeah. Let's make um hang on, if I change the color here, it's gonna change them both, isn't it? Is 
find a way to break the symmetry when you got to place down? Because I want to use the symmetry tool to make sure they're both in exactly the same place. But after that, I want to break the symmetry. Right, in flight. But I, I wanted one red, one green, and just save to our file here. But I guess that's not the way we're going to do it. Yeah, see, I need a I need like a quick resave button that doesn't go through like two extra screens every time. Oh well, we have blinking lights. That should be fine. Just make them green. Okay, we'll just make them green. You're right. Um, I want to click on the light itself, please. Turn down the red. Turn down the blue. There we go. Okay. Sort of excessive clicking here. I wonder if you can you shift click it. Nope. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and launch anyway. I guess I kept something parked. Default name 8. On launch pad 1. Okay, there we go. Recover that. So I guess we can go back to launching from this. Okay, so this mission is going to attempt to go orbital. And what we're also going to try to do is deploy the chutes in sort of the completely automated fashion. Alright, SAS is on. Thrust is to full. We're facing the sky. That's always a good sign. Lights are on. How come the countdown is a four now? It was a three before, I'm sure. And the number doesn't actually go down. Rocket, go up! Shoots broke last time because there were no lights. That makes sense. Hey, yeah, what I'd like is sort of like nav lights on a plane, right? Just have one of them red, one of them green. No, they're still linked! Man, that's disappointing. Uh, I'm a little late on my Oh, no, I'm not late on my gravity turn. Right, we don't have as much thrust to wait here, so... Slower. Alright, let's go. Tappity tap, 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 tap. Alright, 3k, we're about 10 degrees tilt. Halfway on our ascent stage fuel. 6k, and we're going to call this about uh, 2.5 degrees. Time to apoapsis is growing, but not too quickly. I'd like to keep the time to apoapsis under a minute, because that's usually a good sign that you've got a relative flat rise. The other rule of thumb that people tend to use is at about 15k, be at about 45 degrees, which is looking all right here. And definitely a slower launch, which makes sense. We don't have quite as much thrust to wait. Time to apoapsis is nearing minute, which is fine. Okay. Now I can really be outside the uh, the prograde marker a little bit more now. The atmosphere is thinner, so I'm not as worried about Max, but I'm a little bit worried that we're going to be staging here to our atmospheric uh, stage and still be fair or um, our orbital stage and still be fairly much in the atmosphere. I might have needed a little bit more on this stage here. Please stay locked to prograde. Let's go, but this is definitely less efficient. Back to this mode here, and let's go horizontal. Yeah, this, this doesn't run very efficiently in the atmosphere, and I'm worried that we started this a little too soon. But we'll see. Time to apoapsis is actually coming down a little, which is actually okay, sort of, maybe, kind of. Yeah, I may have gone a little too horizontal, or just not have enough in the initial ascent stage. Maybe, like, one pair of SRBs. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to circularize on this one. That's a shame. I think I probably needed less fuel in this stage and a little bit more in the first one. And we're gonna get to space. I think I went too flat, spent too much time in the atmosphere, but we'll see. We are now going to space by a little bit, because we're still in a little bit in the atmosphere, so we're gonna lose a tiny bit of the apoapsis height. So I want to overkill it by a little bit, but that's actually not too bad. 5k, 500 delta V. And we're pretty flat. We really don't need a lot of delta V to circularize here. 
see what happens. We're gonna have to experiment with maneuver nodes and stuff soon too, but I think this one will still just do by hand. Uh, you can time warp. I wonder if I can do the thing that I used to do. I used to have, so X is the, um, the button to kill your thrust. I used to have it um, act, do two things. It would also kill my time warp because X was always my hold on, stop a second button. 400 dB to orbit, 100 deorbit. Well, technically, you you just need one dB to deorbit. If you're just like, you know, if your periapsis is just like one millimeter above 70K, one dB is going to be enough to deorbit you. And the um, um, the dB to circularize depends entirely on your uh, on your orbit shape here too. Okay, if I go and thrust, what's happening to our time to apoplex? It's kind of frozen. Okay, I can wait a tiny scooch. Go now. Okay, I can wait a little bit. Still a little earlier than we need to. Ooh, nice light. I gotta say, like the lighting models light nice in this game. Time to apoapsis is reducing slowly. See, if it was going up when we thrust, that's a sign that we started our thrust too early. So make, oh, see, now it's going up quite quickly. That's still going up. I'm burning too fast. What we're doing is we're spending more effort raising our apoapsis as opposed to our periapsis, although at this point it's so close that it hardly matters. There we go. We are now in orbit. And I've got, you know, just barely, my periapsis is just barely out of the atmosphere. And in fact, we're basically circular. Um, and yeah, we've got more than enough delta V to deorbit at this point. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna quick save. And we're gonna try to figure out how the RCS of our little spacesuits work. Stability mode on. Uh, is there a hide UI button? Used to be F10. I got a quick save. Nope, F10 does not hide the UI. I don't know if it does anything. Hey, F12, I'm not even hearing the steam sounds. It's because I had to launch it differently for the pop-up window modifier to work. I had to bypass the built-in launcher. That's why I'm not getting the FPS or anything like that. It's because I don't actually have um, steam overlay running. I wouldn't be able to screenshot anyway. Okay, that's fine. Go to mission control, complete your mission. Oh. Okay. Ah, you're already back. Well, not actually, but <laughs> not that you achieved the objective, but you did so with minimal explosion. Well, sort of, yeah. Take that, Jeb. That's right. Turns out a new intern stuck the mean sticky note in our break room on his behalf. Jeb's been wanting to press our big shiny thanks science button ever since he heard it would be dangerous for someone with no button training. Legals told him he can't touch the button until he's gone through training center. Advanced button pressing. All right. Um, okay. Are you going to give me a new quest and can I auto finish it? Orbit Kerbin. I'm currently in orbit. Oh, no. I mean, technically, oh, and a buoyancy test. Land in the body of water. Yes, so we've done all this clearly. I'm curious if we go back to our ship. I wonder if it'll um, if it'll get us credit for this. So I guess I go to the tracking station. There's another way to get there. I don't know, but. Okay, there's you. There's focus. There's control. So I'm going to want to control the quill star 01B3. I like that it adds a uh, an extra dash there. There you go. That's completed. Okay, Michon control, come back over here. Thanks, science. Moon or bust? Going green. Uh, attach the science junior to a vessel, perform an environment survey on Kerbin. On Kerbin? Okay, spacewalking. I would love to EVA. So we're gonna figure that out now. I still, I, I think I would still like this to be 
like a little bit more minimalistic so that it could also be shrunk a little bit. Um, I do love the look of that tracking center though. Let's go back to it. This is very nice. Thus far, this looks, this looks really good. I like this. Yeah, we can scale it. I'm just worried if we scale it down because there's so much just visual noise on this that it might be a little hard to spot. I think I would want a, a, a slightly more minimalistic version of this and then I'd feel comfortable shrinking it down. Um, all right, so ability control is on. And do the thing where we roll the hatch. Is that the hatch there? I think that was actually. Yeah. I'm gonna roll the hatch to the top, just because it ASP1 anyway, it's a lot easier to manage your EVs that way. Okay. I mean vehicles out of fuel. Oh, it's not? <laughs> Okay. Jeb's got um, uh, MP, which is presumably monopropellant, so presumably he's got fuel. Can you turn on your light? Jetpack. You don't have a headlight. Okay, I'm going to let go. Hit R for RCS. Yep, good. Whoa. Okay, hold on. Um, Am I attached? Am I? Do I have magnet boots? Whoa. Okay, game. Okay. What's up and down? All right. We're going to have to go and check. <laughs> uh, input. Well, someone in chat probably knows. The magnet boots are very cool, though. I think I would have had to turn the RCS off for the magnet boots to probably work. EVA. Up, down, uh, left, shift, let, control. Okay. I don't remember if those were the same as they used to be. I said keep changing my camera view, camera mode. All right, slow down, slow down. Now, okay, it does change to try to face where my camera is facing. Okay. And can I not science? Oh, yeah, I can. It wasn't blinking. Whee! Are you, are you still sciencing? Are you done? Experiment in progress. There you go. Research inventory, crew observations, low orbit. Oh, it's just a crew assessment. So it's, I think that's the same as I could do in the cockpit. All right. So there's no EVA science report anymore, maybe? Oops. Not a really good sense of exactly how far I am. There you go. Now we can tell and grab and board. Let me quick save again. We'll go back to the science center. It would be great if I could turn on missions in the screen, but I couldn't see. Oh, it's changing camp because we're going suborbital. Right, we were very close. Oh, give me credit for the science junior. Okay. And then space walking. Hey, I'm walking here. I wish I could do a um, Christopher walking. Is that a paper plane uh, impression? Moon or bus buoyancy test. So ideally, if we can land in the ocean, we'll get credit for this one. I mean, we've done it twice already. Aiming for the ocean might be a little tricky. Now, clicking on these, they're not shortcuts. They just tell you where you are, huh? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm probably not going to be able to actually aim at my descent here. But we'll see. So, all we want to do is we want to go and face retrograde. And, I mean, again, we just need to go out and, like, stick our head out the window and spit and we'll decelerate enough to uh, deorbit. Uh, if we were really concerned about our fuel, we'd make sure to be exactly the apoapsis. But I mean, our orbit is so circular right now that it's basically one and the same. So if I just go in, there we go. Now we're suborbital already. Although 
That's a pretty, I mean, we're just gonna cut into the atmosphere now and not actually land. We're gonna bring us down to, there you go, 15K. This might be a little bit of a low uh, periapsis if I was um, returning from like a space mission with like a faster orbital velocity, but this should be fine. So, okay, I'm gonna quick save now. I'm gonna decouple. Now, for our parachutes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the thing, and I never did this in, in uh, KSP-1 because I never trusted it. But I'm going to hit the button on these parachutes. I'm just gonna hit the space bar. Uh, oh, do you toggle this instead? Now you're armed, okay. I was hoping space barring would just arm them, but maybe that's not how it works. Okay, all the chutes are armed. Let's see what happens. Maximum time warp. There you go. Time warp has been slowed down because we entered the atmosphere, which is fine. Um, periapsis is... Uh, depending on the, the atmospheric drag, we might land in the ocean somewhere over here. It's hard to know. Wherever, whatever. If I need to land in the ocean, I could just do a little hop from the, uh, the launch pad and complete that quest. I'm hoping the lights, just like in KSP-1, are not actually physics enabled and will not actually burn off on re-entry here, because that would be awkward. Yeah, he's got the raid inside. Blinking lights. We got the time acceleration. The sun! Here comes the sun. Ma -na -na -na. Oh yeah, I can't screenshot. Dang it! My favorite thing to do in this, in Kerbal. I'd say the ground doesn't look terribly appealing currently. Sort of spoiled by some of the visual mods in KSP-1. Again, surface, retrograde. Everything's looking fine here. Periapsis. See, already we're making contact with the ground. If we look at the map, there you go. You can see the contact point and it's shrinking as more and more drag. So yeah, we will come in for an, uh, an ocean landing, which is great because it'll advance our mission. Confuse the slider, indicate which of the words the selectors are. Now that's a good point over here. It did turn green, so, because you're right, like armed, disarmed, it's over on the right. Hold on, is it in a disarmed state? It looks like it's green. To me, that says it's turned on, therefore armed. But maybe not. But, well, we'll find out. The shoots will either deploy or not. I think the lights are getting hot. Oh, there we go. The chute's just deployed. So presumably we were at 0.1 atmosphere. Um, I don't know what just happened to the parachute there. That was that was great. So presumably we just hit 0.1 atmosphere. So we did the pre-deploy. And then when we hit uh, 2.5K, so 2,500 meters, the drogues should fully deploy. Look at our speed. Already it's way lower. So the, the, the drag from these is working. Maybe, is it possible the default parachute didn't do the drag when not fully deployed? Because when we did the pre-deploy of a parachute before, I don't think it was dropping our speed. I think that might have been the issue. Because I think with the pre-deploy of our single shoot last time, I think our speed stayed uh, stable. Uh, we are, um, we are at like a time warp here, so visually things are happening faster. Go in there. Kill that time warp, that's going to be fine. Uh, there's no more science to be had. I will cover the vessel, then we'll turn in the quest when we get there. I'm wondering if that was maybe it. That the default shoot didn't produce any drag without being full deployed. Which is why our speed stayed too critical. Do, 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 do. Um, mission control. Buoyancy test complete. Yes, we are very buoyant. So the only mission we have left in the queue is moon or bust. All right. What do we need to get that going? Well, there's a moon landing uh, category over here, which has got a landing leg, the big T-800 fuel tank, our Mark I Explorer, which if we were to use this, we would need fairings, yes? I usually just land with the, the Mark One command pod. Is this? Oh! Mm. 
and say, hey, hold on, I can't scroll. Is this all the science? But no. Um, we try planes again. Here's what I remember about planes when we played it last time, when it originally came out in the early access. We tried to build a single stage to orbit vehicle and couldn't. And I was getting very frustrated. And chat was basically being like, ah, you suck at this. I was getting very frustrated and things just kept seeming to get worse and worse and worse and worse with our our plane, our single stage orbit plane. And then the stream ended and I closed the game. And then I, I think I think I went and like had a snack, came back, reloaded the game. And I was like, all right, I want to figure this out. I launched the exact same plane with no changes and all of a sudden it was perfectly fine. Our plane, um, something wasn't being cleaned up between runs. And every time we'd fly, the plane would become more and more uncontrollable. But quitting the game and reloading the save, everything went fine, hit orbit the very first time with a single day. I was like, so bitter. I was so bitter that that's what held us back. Ugh. It's like, it was like, yeah, it was like a half hour later, I was back on Discord. And I'm like, this is literally, I think it was like the first model of the plane we built too. It was like instant first try made it to orbit perfectly fine. Uh, oh, here's our fairings. Okay, let's unlock this. I mean, I may or may not use this model. We'll see. How does the mass... Um, Compare, so 0.67 tons. So this is definitely lighter. We've already got some radial decouplers. Oh, uh, Science Junior Junior. Mini tries, data reports are not mini tries, put the glasses away. Are you just, just a lighter version of the exact same thing? Uh, where was the... There's not a lot of science in the science thing. This weighs a full ton. This weighs considerably less. Okay. We're gonna have a pilot, so we don't actually need antennas. We don't need RCS or anything we're about to do. We might want the option of these tiny engines, although we don't have enough. Um, we don't have enough research for that. I don't think there's anything else I need to unlock right now. It's also a smaller module, yeah. So it'll be physically easier to place. Hmm. Oh, hey, it didn't reload the um, the ship again. So if we were to go and try to moon land this thing. Oh, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, we still don't have the fuel things. I'm actually wondering, hold on. In the interest of saving some time, is there not an option here to not show me the frickin' um, stock things? I mean, it's fine, because I can just load this. Although, yeah, it's auto all these auto-saved copies. Uh, okay. Let's load this. Let's send this thing to the moon. Um, hmm. We'll just throw some SRBs on here for the initial takeoff. It might be a one-way trip. Ah, oh, no, we're still gonna need landing gear and things. Do we actually have to land on the moon for the mission? Is there any way to get my mission... report from here? Huh. I don't know if there is. I think it just wants you to orbit? Okay. Cool. That's going to make life fairly easy then. I'm going to make no changes to their design, which might be a terrible idea. But in the interest of just speed, I'm perfectly willing to f sacrifice a few Kerbals. That's going to be okay. Do, 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 do. Aerodynamics. Nose cone this. Man, that's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I guess we can use a trip planner. Let's try this for a change. We'll say we want a round trip from Kerbin to the moon. Um... Can we not remove the surface if we're just looking for the orbit but really what we can do i mean especially if it's a flyby we can remove this i mean certainly we can move um about 1100 delta v for the whole surface part and one of these low orbit passes as well um i 
I mean, that number's crazy. Isn't it normally like about 6k to get to the moon in KSP1? Maybe I'm thinking Minmus. The problem with this is it's not going to be controllable immediately. How long is this stage going to burn? These might be somewhat excessive. You know what? It's fine. What could possibly go wrong? Quite a few things. Um, Let's add more fuel to our space stage over here. And then our calculations. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's like actually a ridiculous amount. That's going to be enough for a flyby. Um, you know what? Some solar is an excellent suggestion. Yes, thank you. Do, 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 do. There we go. And actually, what I like to often do is throw a couple on this angle part. This is way more solar power generation than we need for what we're running here but it helps to incur, it increases the chance that one of these panels is going to be facing the sun. The only problem is if our butt end isn't facing it, because, yeah, there's probably not an alternator in the Terrier, because there wasn't in KSP-1, so we'll need the solar panel generation. Um, do we think we need a battery? I don't know if we do, but... Let's throw one on there. Uh, you, um, that might be covered. I wonder, is it... The engineer's report doesn't say anything about it. Hold on. If I go and move this here... Oh, the engineer's report doesn't mention it. Oh, that's annoying. All right. Well, it's definitely not covered now. Hopefully, it's not obstructing the parachutes, but I don't... At least in KSP-1, that wasn't the mechanic we had to worry about. Uh, I think I might... Oh, I think auto-strutting is enabled in the options by default. So I don't know if I have to physically build a strut. Tell you what, what we'll do is... Uh, so, we'll save this. I can rename it here. That changed change the vehicle name, not the workspace name. All right. I kind of would like that to work differently. Let's just try this and see what happens. We could replace the Science Junior, right, for saving a bunch of weight. If I go and yoink that, remove this, put this one back. Heck, we might want a couple of Science Junior Juniors. Oh, is it radially mounted? Or might have to go into a cargo bay. Alright, no, it's fine. We'll, we'll go with this one. Okay, just again, I'm trying to minimize... God, I hate this. Um, God, tell me there's an easier... There's a way to one-click, like, make a save, update things. Um, in, the, in the effort to just minimize our design time, I'm not going to bother with cargo bays or anything like that. Okay, let's try to double-check the staging. So... Um, gonna launch with 1.5 thrust weight. It's all gonna be purely SRBs, which are not gimbalable. So it's possible these will make us go too fast and like we'll end up in a very steep ascent, but we'll deal with it. Then at some point, we're gonna dump those, launch our actual gimbling engine for some maneuverability, uh, and do the gravity turn at that point. And then at some point, the bottom tank is gonna run out, and then we'll detach, and this will be a space stage. And then at some point, we theoretically will come home, probably maybe, and then set all that up. You don't need to bring back science modules. Experiment data and samples are stored in the crew pods now. Are they? Oh, well, that's quite swell. All right, well then... I do like the ability to, like, yeah, just not only have, like, a single thing build, have everything work together like this. So that'll make for a gentler re-entry. Let's double-check the staging in. SRB is that, this, that, 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 that. All right, let's go. We've got 30 minutes to get to the moon. Oh, uh, you're right. Do we have steerable winglets? These are adjustable fins. Yep. That's a great point. Because then we can steer during the SRB phase. Well, there's also control state services, but these are... 
adjustable. Like they're gonna need to be in big and some here. I think we're okay. Probably, maybe. Yeah, we could lower launch tower, but this way we're closer to space. <laughs> we're closer to space this way. It's fine. All right, let's go. All right, SAS is on. Thrusters to full. I do like that we get more orbital info and things like that at a glance here. So, is this the number of launches? This number changes. Oh, it's total number of stages. Okay, we should have uh, we should have pre-warmed the um, <laughs> the solid rocket boosters, I guess. That's not great. Having to overcome some negative velocity immediately. All right, hundred meters per second. Uh, controllable surfaces. Not really, no. I guess I should have used the other ones, because I cannot steer. I said these were controllable, but... Oh, we're, we're, we're gravity turning a little. Not much, but some. Yeah, this is going to be way too steep of an ascent. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. All right, you got it. Everything's fine. Good. All right, let's go. Gotta turn over. Way too. I guess they were adjustable, not controllable. Maybe that's the difference. Alright. I'm a little bit worried because I'm I'm outside the prograde marker, so we might end up with suddenly an uncontrollable rocket. But I'm really trying to shove us over here. Come on. Hear me, baby, hold together. Hold together. All I'm looking is a nap ball over here. Okay, no, this is, this is going great. Everything's fine. Great shape. Still below one minute to apoapsis. So we're not too steep. I'm trying to flatten a fair bit here. I'm having to fight the aerodynamics a little bit, but that's okay. I think I can flatten out completely, go completely horizontal at this point. Great stuff. Stay horizontal. That ball just changed modes. That is to 44k. Time to Apoapsis is actually coming down, so let me lock ourselves properly to prograde here. Okay. This case between any good now? I mean, it's a million times better. This is what it should have released as initially in early access. All right, stage is about to swap over here and go. Keep pushing us in prograde. Detach stabilizers, not surface controls yet, maybe. The atmosphere is thin enough that this engine should be running relatively efficiently. I wonder if the ISP updates in real time here. I'm sorry, you do have an alternator? Did they give the Terrier an alternator? So it generates power in KSP2. Well, well, well. Um, yeah, I think we needed to go up a little bit more for this one. I think we're still, like, surprisingly flat. I'm finding it, there's something about the, um, the flight module is making a little, like... Hmm. Um, we're not, we're not gonna go to space. We're not climbing anymore. We're at our apoapsis. How did that happen? All right. I guess, I guess I tried to be too efficient. I went too flat too soon. We'll go a little steeper. Did I ever to EAB instead of launch? I may have. 
Otherwise, I think the uh, I think the ship's fine. Well, the starting reverse wasn't ideal. But what we're gonna do is we're just going to um, add another stage here. I'm gonna do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the space bar to activate the SRBs. And then, well, then after just a beat, we'll go and detach over here. There we go. That wasn't what, like, stopped us, really. So I will attempt. I've got full right pressure here, but I think it's just the control wheel, so there's going to be theoretically a little bit of gravity turn happening, but really not much. You know, countdown, it's like, a, it's like an option. It only does the countdown if you launch it in a certain mode. I'll target an apoapsis over a minute after all. So I'm still turning here. Because normally I often felt like my most efficient um, launches were when the apoapsis stayed around maybe 45 seconds or so. But. So stay horizontal, or stay vertical, a little more vertical, a little bit more. Let that climb up. What this does, it helps us get out of the thicker atmosphere faster. Which is good. Because that's the thing with balance. Most of getting to orbit is about going sideways, not up. You want to go up to escape the thick atmosphere. And so it's this balancing thing of how quickly do I, or how much do I want to focus on getting out of the thick atmosphere quickly versus how much do I want to focus on going sideways? Because again, that's how we get to orbit. So we're definitely over one minute now. Oh, right. And then the other thing is when it switches to this mode. Oh, hold on a second. That might be one of the things that's throwing me off, too. I think it's switching to the orbital nav ball um, sooner than KSP-1 did, which changes your prograde marker. And is changing my interpretations of the flight um, profile. That's part of what's throwing me off. I just noticed it, it changes to the orbital nav ball, I think, faster than before. So, because we're going to want to switch to the other engine that's more efficient soon anyway, I'm going to keep burning now. I, I arbitrarily I like to just say 100k apoapsis, even though really as long as you're over 70, it's enough. But there you go. I was just gonna burn this until it's over, and then I'll go ahead and detach. But then I'm gonna kill this engine, and then we'll just use this for circularization. So we'll wait for orbit at this point. Because yeah, right now being an orbital prograde, technically, uh, well now we are actually in, in space, so that's what we want. Um, but changing the nav ball from surface to orbit. I mean, as long as the atmosphere is thin enough, I guess it's fine. But yeah, it was throwing me off ever so slightly. I still wish we could delink these without having to individually place each one. A light, so I could have different colored lights. But hey, we've got the lights. That's the important part. Okay. Quick save here, because I'm going to do a little time warp. It's easy to accidentally overshoot things. Okay, 30 seconds to apoapsis. Regain that. Now, we could plan a maneuver node. That's fine. I'm going to do a burn starting now and then see what happens. Okay, time to apoapsis is still shrinking, so we didn't start ridiculously early. We might have started too early, too late, but probably we're still early. Time is still ticking down, but slower and slower. And what might happen is we might see this time to apoapsis freeze and then go up, or it might continue to go down, which means we might have done it perfectly. Because in theory, what we want to do is half our burn before the apoapsis and half of it after. Oh, okay, part infective. Yeah, I know, it's we're in the shade, don't worry about it. I might have started it too late. I'm gonna use the new I suppose. I'm so confident about doing everything manually from the uh, the older game. Is the Terrier not as strong? Does it have not as much oomph? Hmm. I should have started this much sooner. 
Because now I have to do a little bit of a, of a radial out kind of thing to twist the orbit a little bit. To see how our apoapsis is going down, that's because of the orbit twist that I'm doing, which is not very efficient. Oh, now it's going up. We're going to be fine for orbit. But yeah, we used more delta V here than we needed to. Because ideally we would have done a whole burn prograde, not like this anti-radio kind of thing, or radial out kind of thing. So we're now orbital, but yeah, we wasted tons more fuel than I would like. Now, I still don't want to do a maneuver node. I want to see if we can still do the eyeball to the moon launch. So what we do for that, assuming we're looking straight down, there's a weird gimbling issue on these controls that in, in to a certain extent is a little unavoidable. No, this is way worse than it used to be. Ooh, that is awkward. So if we put the moon at 12 o'clock, Right around here, which actually is coincidentally is about where Apoapsis is, but that is purely coincidence. Right around here, right? Right when we get somewhere around here, we will see the moon rise. Because we'll come around here, the moon's over there. So we're just gonna see the moon. When we see the moon, if we just burn prograde, we'll eventually get to the moon. As an eyeball thing. Of course we can set maneuver nodes. I just want to see if we can still do it manually. I don't think Jebediah is coming back from this. That's okay, we can plan a rescue mission for him later. So we're set to prograde. We'll do a quick save here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna no time warp at this point. I was freaking out about this number. I hadn't realized it changed from meters to kilometers here. Okay. So alignment is okay. Man, okay, no, this is... uh, When we're looking straight up and down, this rotation and the fact that it keeps sort of making these sudden jumps... That's not good. We're swim down a little. Now it's nice and smooth. The same thing's happening with the nav ball. So they've got a gimbling issue. Um, which... Kind of 3D 101. Huh. It was quite handy to look straight down. All right, quick save here. Quaternions are a bit well, it's clear that they're not using quaternions. If they were using quaternions, we wouldn't have that issue. They must be using like Euler angles, right? So we're waiting to see the moon rise. We're gonna see if this works. There it is. So, moon locked on prograde, full throttle. And what I like about this is. In KSP-1, you don't start, especially since KSP-1 in the career mode, you're worried about money. So you don't start with the ability to, first of all, you can't even see patch conics at first. And then you don't, you also don't have the ability to set maneuver nodes. And so typically what you do is before you go to the moon, is you wait for those things so that you can plan it, but you don't need to. Because as long as you do this, you can get to the moon. I mean, assuming you're in a relatively flat elliptical plane. We're a little bit offset, but no, we're, we're pretty good. <laughs> KSP needs a good name generator because I'm going to run out of kerbals quickly. Yeah, I can see the moon. I can get there. And the thing is, so we, we have patch conics, assu I'm assuming, in here. So we'll actually see our orbit break as we encounter here. But if you don't have it unlocked, you won't get that preview. But all you do is you push your orbit out until it's near the orbit of the moon. If you don't have those in KSP-1, you'll get there. Any second now, we should enter the sphere of influence of the moon. There we go. And one thing I don't know about in this game is, can I focus on the moon? Cool. Now, we can see our entrance and exit. Now, if I go and give us just a little bit of gas, there we go. it's going to bring us a little closer, which is great. So it was just one tap of shift over there. Can I right click on this to get the numbers? Oh, I can mouse over it. Um, 
go quite close here. What are we looking at? Whoop, there we go. 25k. Perfect. Nice close flyby of the moon. Fantastic. I do love the the entrance and exits of the uh, the sphere of influence graphic. That's really cool. How do I get back to my vessel? You see backspace. Quick save here. It's not backspace. I mean, I can click on my vessel. I right click it and then focus on it. But I wonder if there's a quick key to get back to it. Home? Let's see. Focus. Home. Oh, nice. Thank you. So. Oh, I've got some science possible. Backspace deletes the moon. Uh, so we don't need SAS running. Not that I'm worried about my batteries, but if we were, we could do that. Um, where's the sun? There it is. Okay, so solar panels are facing the sun. That's going to continue to be the case as we go out there, which is great. I mean, if I want to be really sure, I would make sure I was completely flat towards the sun, but no, we're good. Okay, I think what I can do at this point. I click on the periapsis or the moon encounter. Okay, right click to lock it. Okay. I was hoping I could just tell it to warp to like the moon encounter, but I guess I'll do a time warp to the point here. Whee! Whoa! Okay, I think I'd clicked on the wrong point. Oh, I see what was going on with the uh, the routing. Okay. Where, where's the moon? Woo! Look at Kerbin over there. Um, that was funny. There it is. There's the moon. I knew it was around here somewhere. It's very pretty. The new tile, the new terrain graphics in KSP2 are great. Oh. You're right. I've got the uh, orbit boost. You're right. I, sh I needed to be on the other side of the uh, the moon to do that. Because uh, now I'm getting a slingshot instead of a slowdown. That's fun. I'm actually wondering about just parking um, Jeb in orbit of the moon here. So we'll turn on SAS. Set ourselves to retrograde. We don't have any Delta V anyway. We're not, we're not, Jeb's never making it home. We'll see if we can park him in orbit and then leave him there. I don't know if we have enough to orbit. I don't remember how much we need. It's somewhere very close to around here, isn't it? I feel like it's very close to around here. Oh, you know what? Let's, um, how does the maneuver system work? So at the PE, we can create a maneuver plan. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. Whoa. Yeah, that gambling issue is seriously frustrating. Hey, we got lots of Delta V. Tons of Delta V. I like this pop up. I like the times and everything like that. That's quite cool. It'd be nice to have the manual um, maneuver controls on there. I mean, KSP1 didn't either, but it was very popular to mod that in. Ah, whenever you look straight up and down, that's so annoying because straight up and down is such a convenient way to look and plan your orbit. But then the second you do, the game becomes uncontrollable. Uh, no, I kind of want to. Well, basically, it's going to be get to the uh, get to the apoapsis and burn all your fuel. To circulate as much as possible. Like literally, we have 40. There we go. 241 Delta view. Cannot change maneuver. Oh, does it cap it? That's nice. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Yes, yeah, so complaining about the lack of Delta V. That's fine. So, um, is there an oh right here? There you go. Align to maneuver node. Great. Having that unlock right from the start is all very handy. Okay, presumably I'm facing the maneuver node. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fast forward. Okay, start burning 40 seconds. It's gonna be 15 second long burn, but that's the amount of fuel we've got. Oh yeah, there's some tech we could be doing. 
I wonder if I missed something from being in high orbit. Then yeah, we can plan a rendezvous and a rescue mission. I love it. I mean, we could just fling something in here with an empty can that's got a probe core on it. And do the transfer, because I don't think we'll have two seaters, but who knows? Maybe from this we'll have enough science for it. Okay, burn in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I love the lights! Here, go for burn! Stop burning in yet, but that's going to happen automatically as we run out of fuel. So it's nice to know the blind moonshot is still there. It isn't for, if I'd remembered to go and uh, encounter the moon from the opposite side, then I, we would have been able to bring uh, Jeb home because the other side would have deorbited us. We would have still needed to use some fuel to maybe adjust our re-entry um, angle, but that wouldn't have used much uh, fuel at all. So we got that. I mean, I've got a quick save. I could load from it, but I kind of just want to park Jeb in orbit of the moon here. I think it's great. I think it's lovely. So uh, you can trash this maneuver. Yeah, just be on stability mode here. That's great. I feel like you deserve to do an EVA around the moon here. Oh, I should transmit any science I've got. Any science... Research inventory. I would like if this would open it when I clicked it. I don't know. I guess it's fine. Um, transmit all the science we can. Yeah, we'll have a blast there in orbit. Exactly. I love doing rendezvous missions. There we go. More of it. I wonder if this game has the option of having a less stupid transmitting for when, like, when you don't have enough power to do the whole uh, transmit. Um... Oh, let's do a little snooze here. Uh, in KSP1, the game gets really annoying because it's like, well, just transmit it slower, which you could you could fudge with like some time warping or do other things to like, just transmit the science slower so you don't burn through the power as quickly. Okay, power's still going down. Are you still transmitting? Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, throttle transmitting speed, exactly. And it's something you could do but there wasn't like a, a just a native way to do it. Are you so this one must be returned. These are environmental samples. OK. All right. So now that's done. You get you get to do a little EVA. Congratulations. We're going to let go. Oh, yeah. Let's test out these magnet boots. This is fantastic. Yep. Love that. Love the magnet boots. This is really good. Planning to buy next time it's on sale. How's KSP2? Oh, magnet boots only so good. How's KSP2 compared to KSP1? Uh, KSP1 is still by far the superior game. This is, this is at this point, like some games are early access and they're like, well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a great game. It's just the developer has big plans and they're putting in more things and it's fine. Like, RimWorld was an early access for ages, and it was a stupendously good game, well worth the money. Other games come out in early access as, like, little more than a tech demo. This came out in early access a year ago, and it was hot garbage. Now it's... Now it's a game, but I'd still recommend KSP1. Now, part of that is because KSP1 has, like, a bajillion mods, and that dramatically improves so much of the game. One thing I'm liking... Uh, over here is I'm assuming the SAS is still active on our module. I think in KSP1, when you when you your last Kerbal leaves the ship, and if it doesn't have a probe core, I don't think the SAS stays on. I kind of appreciate that it's staying on here. I might be wrong about KSP1 for that, but... Yeah, if I would say, like, if you don't already have KSP1, you should get that first and just play that. But otherwise... If you have KSP1 and you enjoy KSP in general and you want to, you know, try different things, I think it's it's playable now, but do 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 uh you see that software ink had an update and it addressed an issue you had? I did. I commented on the uh, the official thing. I'm also very excited for the new the new impossible difficulty of software ink. I think that's really cool. Yeah, a game made by a company that can afford small countries, no excuse for the release date, and it released like two years after it was supposed to. Yeah, it was like it was it felt when it released last year, it felt like it had only been in development for a few months. So I don't know what was going on. I don't know how many times they like throw out all the code base 
I know they like cycled through the production team a couple of times. Like there was clearly um, a, an absolute management disaster going on on the other side. And there's so much potential for this. Like the thing is with the early access, it was like, you know what? I didn't expect colonization to be in. I didn't expect, uh, they're talking about like interstellar travel. Uh, you know, I didn't expect any of those things to be in. I expected the game to be playable and it effectively wasn't. Now it is playable. Certainly. It's got a mission system got built in. It's got the science as well. Like not only is it playable, i.e. our frame rates are more than two. That's, that's important. Not only that, but it's got some, some interesting, compelling gameplay in that we've got, we've got our missions. We've got our, our science system in there so that there you've got something that can kind of lead you to the next thing. It's not feature complete, but that's, that's fine. It hasn't crashed. Um, I think that's still, there was still certainly some weirdness with that parachute we we're experiencing earlier. Now that might just be a difference between KSP one and two. I feel there was something a little off and if nothing else, it wasn't communicating something properly um, because it certainly looked like those parachutes should be working fine. But you know, aerodynamic model is clearly a little bit different here. Um, the fact that I'm still trying to figure out the correct um, ascent profile for our launch to orbit uh, is, is another sign of that. The aerodynamics are somewhat different, but yeah. But yeah, it's 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 playable. It's definitely still very early access. I don't remember what's the uh, what's the price for this going for. Um, I was like, wow, that's cheap. I didn't realize I had KSP one selected. KSP one currently on sale, seventy five percent off. Uh, Ten Canadian buckaroos gets you KSP one. KSP two. Oh yeah, see KSP two. That's part of the issue as well. Is it's it's selling for like full triple A price, 67 Canadian bucks. I mean, okay, cheaper than some triple A games, but they're, they're selling it for like a premium price and there's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if, if you are, if you've never played KSB, I would just get KSB one, especially that it's on sale, but even not on sale. It's a, it's about a third less the price of KSB two with a brilliant and beautiful modding community. You don't need any mods to get started. You can play as is, but Geez, the modern community is good for it. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's definitely early access. And that's the thing. If I, um, if I hadn't, if I wasn't needing to do content, if I wasn't taking KSP2 to go do content for it, if I bought the game for the price that it's at, I would be very disappointed and I would, I would ask for a refund. That's even, even today, I'd be like, okay, this is not something that I'm happy to have spent money on. I think I'd still be in that state. Um, but I'm very picky for early access, right? Mm -hmm. You have plans for Saturday live stream already? We'll decide later. We don't, yeah, we don't have any specific plans for Saturday yet. Um, I don't know what Saturday will be. You have a request, Kentos? I'm not opposed to doing more um, KSP in general. This is like... It looks like there's a big giant unmitigated disaster, but yeah, no, it's okay. We're just in the shade yeah, or something. Pay attention to this new subscriber. Better. Although we didn't actually fill up our battery pack, which is kind of surprising. More Cow World, more KSP, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. I've been planning on doing some dungeon crawl on my own for a little bit. Parts of Iron. We could revisit some Pal World. I'm, I personally got like, I was I sort of hit that done state for me. I don't do a lot of, um, I don't play a lot of survival crafting games for very long because usually I'm like, oh, this is kind of interesting and I want to figure it out. And then once I get to the point where I'm like, okay, I sort of figured it out, then I'm like, meh, I'm kind of done, right? I've solved the puzzle and that's okay. But, and so the, I sort of hit there with Pal World. I put in like a bunch of hours in like the first few days. Uh, how much did I get in? I got 20, 23 and a half hours in. So I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Um, that's a lot longer than I usually stick around in these survival crafting games. And then I was like, oh, okay, probably done. I've been thinking about it again. I, kind of maybe want to play some more. Speaking of early access games, but Pal World feels infinitely playable in its current state. And it's just a lot of, well, the developers have big plans for, for things going down the road, you know, more end game content, more tech, PVP, different things like that. And it's like, see, that's that's kind of open, that's early access-y stuff. How many runes have you escaped with in Dungeon Crawl? Um, I feel like I've done four or five runes, but I'm not sure. I'm not certain. Yeah. 
I think there's also a world of difference um, with early access games. Same thing with like things that are looking for Kickstarter backing. There's a world of difference between when you've got a fairly major company behind something and a small indie studio. Um, because it, it, in general, you shouldn't be asking anyone to pay for something that is incomplete. It's It feels acceptable when it's a situation of, well, this will literally never get done because, you know, otherwise, you know, Joe Blow, the single developer, is going to have to go and, you know, work his job at the phone company some more or something like that, right? It's very different. Also, I um, I, I feel very strongly that um, Kickstarters for things like physical products like board games and stuff makes a lot of sense because it's less of a Kickstarter and more of a pre-order system. It's like, listen, we need we need to pay the printer to print these copies, so we, we need the money before you get the product in your own hand. It's a little different with some of the digital ones. Um, so, yeah, so, you know... I have different levels of tolerances for things and, and whatever. And I'm also personally always a little bit worried about like burning myself out on the early access of a game before the real version of it comes out. That's one of the reasons I didn't play a lot of the early access to Baldur's Gate 3. Even though it was quite excellent, I didn't want to burn myself up out on the Act 1 story before the full game came out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know your run of software ink is done, but you released Quill's left ear and Quill's right ear. I'm still waiting on Quill's final front ear. Boo! Cosmeteer is great talking about early access. Cosmeteer. Um, I'm trying to remember what that is. To do Cosmeteer, Starship Architect and Commander. Oh yeah! Didn't I play that? An early, early version of it? Or am I just getting confused with other things that might look similar? I don't actually have it on Steam. Maybe you played a demo or a very early press version? Because it's one of the two or three games that are like currently being developed that look kind of similar. Like, um, there's the one by the Prison Architect people. Well, the Star Trek Stellaris, yeah, we didn't done that either. I've got to revisit Stellaris. I want to do some more Vicky 3, Poi 4. New terraforming game out that's kind of like Master of Ryan 2. It's Master of Ryan 2 terraforming game? Aurora 4X now. Oh, that would be nice to revisit too at some point. Maybe. I don't know. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through Cosmeteer over here. Kind of feels like we should play this. Let me, I'm going to look into this. We're going to wrap up the stream here. But that's a definite possibility for something or other. I wonder if I have anything in my email about it. I'll look it up because that might be fun. We'll see. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'm getting some weird spam on Discord. Uh, new Prison Architect game trailer in 3D. Yeah, Prison Architect 2. They've uh, released a sneak peek about um, that it's going to be coming out. It's going to be 3D with Z levels, which is going to be great. I do have a, I do have a contact for Cosmet here. I might be able to annoy someone for a key. If not, it's cheap enough. See, that's an early access game. It's 25 Canadian buckaroos. That's nothing. Uh, so we might consider taking a look at that because it looks pretty good. Anyway, we'll wrap it up now. Um, Kiss for Luck should be streaming. This one over here. I oh, she streamed Panorama, the game that I played on Saturday. So if you want to see some more of that, do that. Otherwise, I will see y'all on Saturday for some sort of video game, presumably. Bye-bye. <laughs>